good Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark how are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Tuesday I'm doing great my girls doing great my family's doing great hope each and every one of you are doing great and I hope you're having a great week if you could please hit that like button that subscribe button and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new if you could share with somebody on social media help spread the message help spread the word that'd be amazing and there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So what's up? How you doing? Middle of spring, rainy and shitty out all the time, but at least it's warming up and we can see the summer is near. But the summer brings crazy, we all know that. Uh, so be ready for the crazy, 2023. We all know it's nuts out here, but today I want to talk about prison. I want to go back and talk about cell partners, the good, the bad, the ugly. I know a lot of people ask a lot of questions about cell partners, and honestly, it's one of the most difficult times or things about doing time, but also it's pretty important to have a cell partner that you get along with and that you can trust, but this is not always possible, and even less so if you're in provincial, uh, just because of the constant rotation of people, people going to the pen, people going home, people getting bail, uh, it's just never the same people. But let's start in provincial. So when you, when you first get there, you kinda gotta establish your dominance with your cell partner. Now it just depends on your character, but I'm the type of dude that I'm most likely gonna come in there and I'm gonna try and get the bottom bunk. I'm not gonna punch you out and smash you over it, but I'm gonna try and get that bottom bunk. I don't wanna be climbing up and down. Or so, you know, I just don't want that. Uh, so that's me. But you could go into to a cell and it's a completely different circumstance, you know? Somebody's on the top and they ain't giving up the top, you know? Uh, the first thing that you got to understand when you're moving in is to respect the man's space. You don't know the person that you're moving into. You know, keep in mind that we're talking about provincial, right? So you don't know who you're moving in with. I'm talking if you're new. And you never know the character and you will be alone with this person. So you should probably tread lightly because some people hair trigger smash your face in, right? Some people, completely opposite. You know, you're gonna laugh, joke, and have a good time right away because they're not gonna be like that. So me, I'm the kind of person is, I'm cool. You know, I don't even care. You know, as long as you ain't snoring, you're welcome to live. Uh, and you don't have bad charges, right? But I'm also difficult to live with because I'm set in my ways, you know? I am on the bottom bunk. You know, if something's on the TV, I'm gonna be at the window watching. If I want something to be happening in here, if homies wanna come in and smoke or whatever, this is going to happen. So uh, if you're a free thinker, then you should probably move out and go live somewhere else. Uh, best circumstances, you know. If you're in the federal system, a lot of the time, you will be alone. You won't have a cell partner. It's changed up a lot lately, but still there are circumstances where you might not. But in provincial, you're always gonna have a cell partner uh, and you're gonna meet some crazy dudes. Like I'm talking dudes from 70 years old, just weirdos. You'll see, I, okay, so I remember I was in Lindsay and they were coming around with this old dude like late at night and every cell that they took him to, he was getting bounced out before the guard even walked away. Like, so I look down, I feel bad for the man. You know, I see this old man. Like, I was just thinking to myself, man, if that was my grandpa or whatever, like, I, I feel away. So I banged on the door and I said, send him up. I have an open cell. He can stay here for the night. Psh, crazy mistake. Almost got myself into a situation where I was going to smash the man. But he started doing all kinds of crazy shit, like literally like laying up in the bed and just dry heaving into the air. 
like he's going to just throw up all over the cell. Just a total lack of regard, totally disrespectful, making all kinds of noise, snoring, talking in his sleep, like without even sleeping. The man's talking in his sleep, like he's just mumbling away up there. And honestly, by like two in the morning, he was on the door. I'm like, bro, you better get on that fucking door and check out of this cell or I'm going to smash your face in because like this ain't happening, bro. I can't sleep. Like you're going to make me crazy and I'm going to end up hurting. You. And this is a possibility, right? You could get anybody in there, right? Uh, but the one good thing about provincial is you can bounce guys out quite easily and, and if you have to smash somebody smash them you know you're in you're in provincial and it's much less chance of getting severe consequences misconducts and stuff like that i'm not telling you to kill anybody because that would obviously not be good but if you gotta bounce somebody out of your cell man then that's what you gotta do because you gotta live there you know this is somewhere where it, whether it's 90 days or 180 days no matter how long it is this is going to be your home and it's a very small space and when you live in a tight confined space like that with somebody you get to know them very quickly and v like almost better than the people you know in your actual life and you'll figure out very quickly if you like somebody or if you don't and i'm telling you a huge mistake a lot of dudes make is they rush to bring their homeboys into their cell. These guys could be homeboys from weeks, they could be homeboys from months, and they could be homeboys for years. It doesn't matter if you've never lived with somebody, then you probably should think twice before you just move into a six by eight space with somebody. Because uh, many a times people move in together and they realize quickly that they can't can stand each other and they're smashing each other they're fighting and this this is a fair fairly regular occurrence uh, in prison or in jail okay um, but like I said in provincial you do have much more freedom to move from one cell to the other uh, in federal they're gonna do it but federal is a much different circumstance there's not always open cells you can't just like move without any uh, like paper trail they have to change your your place in the computers and stuff it's a much like lengthier process uh, than just in a provincial joint so they're much l less likely to do it and plus you're just much like less likely to want to move you know once you're laid down somewhere and established it's kind of is what it is and you have to learn patience you have to learn to get along with people uh, you have to learn that sometimes people have habits that will drive you crazy that are out of their control like snoring you know I can't tell you how many times I've stood over top of somebody in the middle of the night and just want to unleash on them and smash their face in because I can't sleep for days uh, oh, it just makes me mental it, it makes me absolutely crazy but you can't be mad at somebody for that you know that's out of their control so uh, I remember I had a celly in the ville and uh, I, I really liked him as a dude but this dude was like a chainsaw in an empty forest echoing <laughs> like I'm telling you paint peeling snoring that'll literally make your hair stand up on the back of your neck it's so loud look where wake you out of a sleep it's so loud wake him out of a sleep nah man like me and you is cool we bros but like i was here first and you leave him because this ain't working for me brother you know and that's happened to me over my years so many times like i said I'm difficult to live with now in federal it's an even different situation the cells are even smaller now you have TVs you have clothes you have stereos so if you have two people in a cell they both have TVs if there's no headphones you can have an issue 
you know, stereo, which m music's playing, you can have an issue if you guys have totally differences in opinions in what you like to watch, what you like to listen to. This can be an issue. Um, I think in federal, there's a lot more respect. Um, man to man, con to con. I think that there's an understanding that weapons are used. So people are much less likely to disrespect you. I'm telling you, you could take the most ignorant dude from provincial. That's bullying everybody, punking them for their food, smacking dudes out. As soon as he gets federal, he ain't acting like that. It's, it's just not the way it works, you know. Somebody will run up on you quick and put one in you, you know. So the level of respect is a little different. Um, so it is easier to live with people, but when you have to live, shit, eat, and you know, if you're in federal and you get a, a, a extreme search, I forget what the search is called, section 50, I have section 53 search, I can't remember exactly what it is, I'm blank right now on it, but they lock down searching for weapons. They start at one end and they move to the next. It literally takes them a day per block, basically. Like if you have uh, 3A and 3B, that's going to be a whole day. So if they start on the AB side, the end of the CD side ain't coming out for like two weeks. They give you two meals a day. That's it. Not what? Not breakfast, lunch, dinner. They give you lunch, dinner, and a couple hard-boiled eggs and pieces of bread. That's about it, right? So you have to learn to conserve your food a lot better because the meal portion sizes are terrible. And this can create tension in a cell partner circumstance. Um, but I, I, I do think in a federal situation, you're still going to tend to be a happier guy. You have more. There's more opportunity. You have more to lose. So I just find people are generally more, um, they'll compromise more. Now in, in provincial, it's a, it's a totally different animal. You know, if you and your cellie don't get along and totally have differences of opinions, this is going to get stacked up really quick because you don't got nothing but time on your hands. You don't have the TV, you don't have the stereo. So you're going to be talking. And you're going to find things to do. Can't, you know, there's been a many days in my life where out of boredom, I've been mean to my cellies. You know, I, I, I had a cellie in Lindsay back in the day that I used to like bully him because just his face made me angry. And he, cl he claimed to be so many things that he wasn't. And I, I didn't want to beat him up and hurt him, hurt him. But I wanted to show him, like, bro, this isn't for you, buddy. Like, you ain't cut from anywhere near the kind of cloth you need to be cut to even be in Lindsay. Let alone making this a career path for you. That ain't going to work, bro. I used to literally, like, drag him out of his bed in the nighttime and just Charlie horse him up. I, it was kind of wrong, you know. But that's what happens, you know. When you're trapped in a 6x8 or a 6x10 with somebody you don't know. And even worse, you don't like, you know. Um, I remember I had a celly one time during a lockdown. The kid came in, right? Meth smoking kid, Asian kid. And he, we were on a lockdown and I think it was strike. Pretty sure it was during a strike. And they were bringing us, um, like, pretty good food, you know? Like, a lot of good desserts, like, catered in stuff. Still jail shit. Just a step up. It's like airplane food rather than, you know, con air food. So, uh, I remember this kid just slept for, like, three or four days. And he just, like, expected me to save his food for him. So when he woke up and realized that I had boxed all of his food, he's like, yo, bro, where's, where's my food at? And I'm like, so, oh, you wanted me 
to get out of my bed, box all your shit away, put the tray on the hatch while you sit up here and fucking sleep? It's not how this shit works. So uh, many times you're in circumstances that you kind of really can't get around. And there's times where you do have to kind of show that you're not to be fucked with, especially in your living space. This is your place of living. I'll never say your home, but in, in the time you're there, that is basically your home. So that is the one spot you can't let nobody come in and fuck around with. Now, in federal, I remember I was in the Ville and I had no cell, but I was in a double cell. And this is when they were changing it over from full population to half reception. And they were bringing everybody from the AB side over to the CD side. And I had already moved over and was on 4C. And he kept asking me, bro, can I move into your cell? And I'm like, brother, like as of right now, I don't want nobody in there. Worst case scenario, you're forced. Come holler at me. But you need to understand, brother. Like this is my home. So you're not going to come in and change nothing up. And I don't care what you say. And this is, he's not like a huge dude, but he's like a purebred, like hick. But who wants to be a city guy? You know, so yeah, although he's clearly a hick, you know, he have cane rolls in his hair and he's out scrapping all the time, but he's not that tough. He thinks he's tougher than he is, but he's, he's cool. You know, I'm like, bro, you can move in, but you got to understand like my home, my fucking rules. And I remember the man used to have cold sores on his mouth all the time. So when we'd bun a spliff, I'd take the toilet paper roll and make a chalice specifically for him. I'd cut a hole in that, put the spliff in the toilet paper roll, and be like, yeah, bro, like, no disrespect, but that shit on your lips got some shit on its lip. And uh, <laughs> it was fun. You know, I, I, I had fun messing with him. Uh, he was my buddy, though. And, you know, the reality is you change when you're doing time. You change. And... Uh, Sometimes people um, will get on your nerves and sometimes you'll like somebody in the beginning and by the end, not so much. I remember I moved in with one of my homies and he's still somebody that I consider a close homeboy of mine from my time. But he's a bug, like a super bug, super high energy always bouncing off the wall and I'm high energy but when I shut it down I want it to shut down quiet right so we ended up moving in with each other thinking that this was going to be cool smoke the man had some things going on you know we were doing good but he drove me fucking mad like mad I'm telling you he's the kind of dude you'd be like sleeping two o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden he's shaking you wake up Time of, oh, he's just a bug. Bug. And I can't tell you how many times we're like face to face ready to knuckle up over this guy's BS. And I told him, I'm like, bro, you're literally going to fuck our friendship up over being a bug? Like, are you, are you, are you serious, brother? Like, that's some real waste man shit. And honestly, bro, I, I like... I changed and I, I said, bro, I'm not, I don't want to live with you no more, bro. <laughs> That's a fact. This is, this ain't working. And it affected our friendship for like a year. So think twice if you are doing time before moving in with somebody you think is your friend. Because like I said, you get to know them really quick. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys. So you don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody goes to prison, nobody goes to jail, nobody's addicted. That's what I do, but that's not a reality. Especially in 2023, things are hard out here. Uh, and sometimes you're going to do something that lands you inside, right? My videos will help prepare you for that if that is necessary for you. 
and at least when you go in you're semi ready and you don't fuck everything up for the guys that are in there and they're not forced to do something to you out of stupidity right uh, and it's all ultimately though the goal of my video is to make you never go obviously when I when I talk about these things it's to deter you all together you know not having a not having to live with a man in a six by eight difficult you know N not an ideal circumstance where you're literally fighting over food fighting over bed fighting over phone time fighting over the dumbest shit pride ego and every circumstance can eventually cost you your life so just don't go to fucking jail if you could please hit that like button, subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that'd be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of most of my videos. So I love y'all. You know, thanks for watching this video. Uh, Sully's thumbs down, bro. You know, if you could do your whole bit in a single cell, that would be ideal and it would create a lot less circumstances. You know, you could be in a lower security joint, you know, and have a dude in your cell you think's a cool guy. You think this is a decent dude. You know, you talk to him for a few months and then somebody comes to you and says, bro, the guy's super skinner, head hound to the pound. It's so disappointing, you know. Uh... I fucking hate jail. Don't go to jail. Love y'all. The new Mac Clark.